very good morning to each and every one of you and uh, this morning uh, we have uh, again have had to record this service because uh, we don't want anyone to leave your homes because uh, the times are dangerous yet we thank almighty god that we are able to worship him sunday after sunday even though we cannot meet uh, in the church so this morning uh, we want to thank the lord and we want to praise the lord we want to worship him because he is worthy of worship because he has brought us through during these times and uh, it, it doesn't seems to be ending and it, it seems to be getting worse yet we have the opportunity to worship him and uh, we want to worship him so i want to read psalm 100 it says shout for joy to the lord all the earth worship the lord with gladness come before him with joy, joyful songs know that the lord is god it is he who made us and we are his we are his people the sheep of his pasture enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name for the lord is good and his love endures forever his faithfulness continues through all generations let us bow down our heads in prayer heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to come together and worship you lord even though we cannot meet together as a church family and worship you in our church Lord, we thank you that you have enabled us through technology to worship you in our homes. Lord, as we look forward to worship you this morning, Lord, we ask that you help us to experience your presence among us, O Lord. Lord, help us to worship you through your spirit that you have poured into us. So, Heavenly Father, we come in this time to your hands. We come in every aspect of this service to your precious hands. And Lord, let this time be a time where we can truly worship you, experience your goodness and your love. We pray to you in the precious name for Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
As we come together and as we bring our intercessions to the Lord, let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning. We come before you to thank you and we praise you, Lord, because you are God Almighty. Lord, you are God who created heaven and earth. You are God who spoke things into existence. So, Lord, we exalt your name on high. We lift up your name on high because you are God Almighty who has enabled us to come to your presence and worship you this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come before you, as we thank you and praise you, Lord, Lord, we come before you as weak human beings. Lord, our sins are many. Lord, when you have given us this opportunity to be your children, Lord, what a privilege. And yet, Lord, we many a times go astray. We do things which we should not do and we don't do the things which we should do, oh Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you forgive us our sins. Yes, oh Lord, as we gather here, Lord, as we bring our confessions, as we look into ourselves, into our hearts, Lord, listen to our hearts as we confess and bring our inequalities to you at this moment. Lord, we thank you because you are a merciful God. And we thank you, Lord, in your mercy that you have forgiven us. And as we come before you now, O Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you have been to us. We thank you very specially for, for being with us during this past week, O Lord. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you for keeping us in your care and keeping us in good health, O oh mighty Heavenly Father. Lord, very especially during these times, O oh Lord, times of terrible anxiousness and fear, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are God Almighty who is always beside us. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. And Lord, at this very moment, 
we come before you and we uphold our church to your precious hands. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you bless all of us as part of CGBC family for blessing us so wonderfully, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you continue to guide us as a church. You continue to give us this opportunity to be a part of your family at CGBC, you Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we commend ourselves to your hands as a church. Lord, we uphold the, the annual general meeting which is scheduled for this month. Yet, Lord, we know that it would be difficult given the situation that we are in at the moment. So, Lord, we ask that you guide us on how to go about it, whether to postpone it, or not, Lord, so we seek your guidance. Lord, uh, uh, be with us, very especially the leaders, as uh, we decide on that, Almighty Heavenly Father. We also uphold our pastors, your precious sons, Lord, we very especially uphold our mentor pastor, Priyanta Vijay Gunavati. Lord, uh, we thank you that uh, you have given us his services to us. So, Heavenly Father, we commend him and his family to our sons. We commend our, our three selves, O oh Lord, uh, Pastor Kuma and the family and Pastor Ajit and the family. I say, O oh Lord. So, Heavenly Father, guide us as we as we come together and as we take your children at CGBC to grow in you, mighty Heavenly Father. Lord, we commend our leaders, O oh Lord, to your precious hands. Lord, we commend every leader of this church that you will guide them and that you will grant them your wisdom and understanding and Lord, that you will be with their families. Lord, we commend all our members to your precious hands, very especially during this time. O Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to protect us, protect us from the virus. O mighty Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you grant us your comfort, very especially those who are going through difficulties at this time, O oh Lord. Difficulties of uh, providing for their families and also those who are going through difficulty because they are sick, those who have contracted the virus. We ask that you extend your mighty hand and they touch them and they heal them, mighty Heavenly Father. Lord, we very specially uphold uh, all among ourselves who are now sick, that you will touch and that you will heal them. Lord, we commend our elders to your precious hands, very especially during this time, O oh Lord. Lord, why we thank you that the most of our elders and most of us have been able to get the vaccination. But we ask that you continue to protect our elders from being infected. O oh, Heavenly Father, we uphold very especially those among us who lost loved ones, O oh Lord, during these past few weeks. Uh, close relations. And Lord, we ask that your comfort be with those families, so mighty Heavenly Father. Yes, O Lord, we commend all of them to your hands for your touch, your comforting touch to be upon them. And Lord, at this moment, we come in this country to your hands. We come in the Christian church in Sri Lanka to your hands. Help us, O Lord, as a church to come together and cry out to you, o Lord, to bring comfort and healing to this land. And Lord also cry out to us one church of Sri Lanka to guide our leaders to do what is right and what is just. So Heavenly Father, we commend all our people to your precious hands, the people of Sri Lanka. Lord, many people are going through terrible hardships. Many are sick, O oh Lord. Many are in hospitals or in covid centers. Lord, we ask that you extend your mighty hand and heal them, very especially those who are in critical conditions. Lord, we ask that you touch them and heal them. Lord, we are uphold the medical uh, system to your precious hands, O mighty, the healthcare care system that it will not be overwhelmed. Lord, we ask that equipment and supplies will be there to treat the patients and also we commend the professionals, the doctors, the nurses, the attendants and all those who are there Lord, that you would 
grant them your strength at this time, O Lord. And Lord, uh, that you will protect them and their families from contracting the virus. Lord, we also uphold our leaders. We ask that you guide them to do what is right. Lord, that you will lead them, O Lord, to do what is correct and what should be done not according to their wills, but your will, O Mighty Heavenly Father, because you, all, all leaders have been appointed by you, and uh, all nations are under your control. So, Lord, we commend this country to your hands, we commend our leaders, our president, the prime minister, the cabinet of ministers, that they will do what is just, and, Lord, uh, what is right, and, Lord, uh, that they will be guided by you and you alone. So, Heavenly Father, we commend all ourselves the hands and pray to you in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 to 18. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching, with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you, Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of one Siphorus, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Good day. Be faithful. To explain about being faithful, there's a famous story of a man who ha had worked across Niagara Falls. Has anyone visited or seen the Niagara Falls? I was fortunate that I get an opportunity to see the Niagara Falls with my own eyes. When I saw it, even the very thought of anyone crossing seems to be so crazy. The per person who we are talking about right now tied a rope right across the Niagara Falls and he cheerfully walked across the rope. Everyone in the crowd cheered. Then he asked the crowd a question. Who thinks I can walk across with someone on my shoulders? Everyone in the crowd raised their hands. They were sure he could do it. Then man asked, who will sit on my shoulders? No one in the entire crowd wanted, wanted to do it. The people thought he could walk across the rope with a person on his shoulders, but no one was willing to put their complete trust in him. Finally, the man's son raised his hand. The little boy said, Daddy, I trust you. Then man put the boy on his shoulders and carefully walked across the rope. The difference between the crowd and the boy was that the man's son was willing to completely trust his father. In the same way, many people believe that God can save. 
but in order to actually be saved you must be willing to put your trust in Jesus Christ let us pray may the word of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable thy sight O Lord my Redeemer Amen so today our third lesson theme is be faithful but as a mentor pastor my task is make this church as a disciple making church so this morning message going to be more focused on discipleship second timothy chapter 1 verse 13 follow the pattern of the sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Jesus Christ as we consider discipleship and our responsibility to follow Christ none model discipleship better than the Paul he lived his life in complete surrender to the Lord and committed the majority of his time investing in others. Timothy benefited greatly by being discipled in the faith by Paul. As a young pastor, the insight and instruction of Paul were invaluable to him. Our text today reveals the essence of discipleship that one on one instruction and guidance by a mature saint investing in the life of a young believer. Paul wrote this letter to instruct and encourage Timothy in his ministry effort. As we try to become genuine disciples of Christ while seeking to disciple others the words of Paul are of great benefit to us. Verse 13a Follow the pattern of sound words. He charged Timothy to remain committed to the word of God. The sound word he had received as a minister of the gospel the word was to be his guide the word of god carries all the teachings today we are living in the era where we are largely emphasizing on our tradition and culture but here paul is inviting Timothy to be firm in teaching and is passing on, on the Bible truth. His life and ministry must be firmed and moved by the word or he would have no spiritual significance. As we consider discipleship developing a relationship is not enough if we never share the word and study the scriptures together it's develop 
a friendship. Friendships are great, but discipleship is the goal. Discipleship must involve studying the scripture together. Paul urged Timothy to hold first to the truth of the gospel, be faithful to the word, be faithful to the gospel, be faithful to the gospel of Christ. God has not called me to be successful. He called me to be faithful, Mother said Teresa. God has not called me to be successful. He called me to be faithful. As a disciple seeking to disciple others, we must focus on the priority. The gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many curriculums one can choose and many of them are great but we cannot overlook or minimize the gospel. Effective discipleship will be centered on the word of God and gospel in particular. It is the gospel that transforms at salvation and sanctifies as we grow. If we aren't exalting, challenge others to become more like him, we are not effective disciples. Christ is the center of our faith, Martin Luther. Christ is, Christ is the center of our, our faith. Verse 13b, which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Paul would never urge compromise on biblical doctrine and Timothy to approach every ministry opportunity in the faith and love of Christ Jesus. Our discipleship effort must be rooted and grounded in sound biblical doctrine. But we too must operate in the faith and love of Christ. That is the purpose of discipleship, being an immature believer to a better understanding of the faith. This will require much patience, love and prayer. Verse 14a Guard the truth that has been entrusted in you. Paul refers to the good thing that we was committed to Timothy. He was a recipient of salvation. He had heard the heard and received the gospel. He processed this marvelous gift of grace within. We know we can't share what we don't have, but every believer process the truth of the gospel. We have the privilege and responsibility to share that which we have received with those who have yet to receive it. We also must seek to share what we have learned following salvation with those who are yet immature in the faith we were given in order to share. Verse 14b, by the Holy Spirit who dwells us. God means to protect, 
Paul is referring to protect or guard or keep the gospel truth. Timothy was charged to guard his faith and invest in others. This is impossible through more human ability. Thankfully, we are not alone. The Spirit dwells within and He will guide us in all truth. He will provide the courage to stand, the wisdom to share, and the compassion to invest in others. This is my personal experience. In 2011, Sangamaya executive sessions, I challenged the church to serve in northern part of this island. But in that meeting, there was one person challenged me to be there in northern part. Then one day, midnight, myself and uh, Ramesh, now he's the Reverend Ramesh, we took the bus Colombo to Waunia and we go down in Waunia and we collected few addresses from Kakirava church and we visited one house early in the morning. When we visited and we knocked the door and there was a lady cheerfully welcomed us to her house and cheerfully praising God that when she prayed that particular morning the God Holy Spirit revealed her that she will meet a pastor but she is very cheerful that they are meeting she is meeting two pastors now and we prayed together and we inform her our purpose we inform her we are going to serve or we are going to open a worship place in this area then she willingly offer her house as a place of worship then we too are very much thank the Holy Spirit guiding us that far but we discuss. It is not the ending point. Then we took another bus to Kilinochia and get down in Kilinochia town and we move one place to the other. There are a few addresses but we visited. There are, there are no one to welcome us. Then whole day we go around here and there tired and finally we discuss enough for the day. We will come another day. And we went to the bus stand and wait for the bus. While we are waiting for a bus, there is a bike stop in front of us. And the guy said, Hello Ramesh, Inga Poringala. Then we are a little bit scared, but cheerful. Then we explain about him, our purpose of visit. And when we share our purpose, he cheerfully welcome to his house to open a place to worship the Lord. This is not a house, it is a shed, it is a hut. There is a, uh, himself and his wife and the small child were together in that small hut. There is no any facility, there is no particular washroom or electricity, whatever. But he is willing to offer his shed or hut to us to open it as a place of worship. That is the 
beginning of Kilinochia ministry and that is the beginning of northern part of our ministry. We are thankful to God. Now we celebrated last month 10th year anniversary of Kilinochia Baptist Church. Today I must thank God that that is the largest Christi Baptist community in this island. Therefore our effort to serve the Lord must rely on the guidance and provision of the Spirit. Verse 15 You are aware that all who are in Asia have turned away from me. Paul used a bad example of discipleship. How do you feel about the person you disciple or minister to end, whom you help to bring to Christ and that person ultimately turned away from you and the Lord? How would you, do, how would you feel if you were in Paul's place and experience such a situation. This is not the only experience. So many left him and moved away from the Lord. This is the typical and hard time, but never blame him. Here these two names are mentioned by Paul and he say they turn away. Therefore we too need to be very careful if anyone goes away from you or has harmed you in any way, don't bring judgment against them because judgment belongs to God and God alone. Verse 16 to 18. Finally, look at Paul's offered a great example of good discipleship on what he said about Onesipus. After that all he did to him, Paul is asking to seek mercy from Lord on Onesipus. We too need to pray for those who are faithful. Paul prayed twice that he will receive mercy and also he prayed that God will reward him on that day. That is the day when Jesus come again. Paul used the word mercy. It is for those receiving reward as a free gift from God. So the Lord is investing us to be good examples. Paul offers a great example of discipleship. He provides valuable insight in this passage. We must maintain a proper perspective while seeking to serve the Lord. I am convinced the Lord desire each of us to become a genuine disciple who will make other disciples. Are you committed to serve, serving the Lord and in investing others? Are you committed to serving the Lord and investing in others? If you are unsaved, come to Christ. As our story, many people believe that God can save. But in order to 
actually saved, you must be willing to put your trust in Jesus Christ being a new and wonderful journey in Christ. May God bless you. As you know, the Women's Fellowship AGM is postponed. You have received all the notifications. If there are changes, the President of the Women's Fellowship will notify you. The AGM of the youth is also not postponed. Thisal will update you from time to time if there are changes, but it will continue as planned. The AGM of the CGBC is also not postponed, but church is monitoring the situation of the country very closely. And if there are changes or new developments, we will let you know ASAP. We missed uh, Ranjini's 
and Dr. Kingsley Alice's daughter's visit. We miss the family. And uh, I hope that they had a wonderful time together, a wonderful reunion with the family. And uh, they're back to U.S. and pray that uh, God's protection will be upon them as they fly to U.S.A. And also at the end of the journey, that they will, their reports uh, will be negative, that they'll be permitted to enter into U.S. without any issues. We continue to pray for Ranjini and Kingsley and also the family on God's protection. Please continue to pray for our country and generally for the entire world. Remember always, Quaid is not powerful, but Lord is powerful. His healing hand is upon us and he will do everything in his own time and he will bring healing to the entire nation. And thank you and God bless you. Okay, before we get ready for the benediction, I would like to ask you to stay safe in your homes. Do not go out unless it is very important. Yes. And uh, when you go out, uh, wear your masks, wash your hands, sanitize yourselves, keep distance among people and stay safe. And anyone of you who has not got the vaccination, I encourage you to go and get the vaccination because the government is going all out to vaccinate everybody. There is vaccines available and uh, we thank God that uh, this vaccination effort is a success. So if you have not got your vaccination, go and get vaccinated. That is the will of God. Let us prepare ourselves for the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us, very especially during this time of difficulty and anxiety. We ask that the Lord be with us always. Amen.